Hello, hello. Put some of together. Food so it doesn't sit out. Uh, so, oh my, my phone battery is going very quickly. So, uh, I'll try to make this relatively quick for an update. Um, so, Tate is not in her playbook. <laughs> I'm sure you all noticed. Uh, I think most of you know that she had an appointment this afternoon, unscheduled. She, last night, uh, her head started to puff up just a little bit, and this morning was just a little bit puffier even. So when she first was out of surgery, the soft spot on the top of her head, if this is her head, she has two soft spots. She has one, these are, here's her eyeballs. <laughs> um, she has a soft spot, spot right here, and then skull, and then a soft spot right here. And the after her surgery, they were concave, which is what they should be. So the fluid, uh, the extra fluid, was not built up in her skull and her the top of her skin where the soft spot was actually was concave so it dipped like a little bowl on the top of her head all right hi Anne. hi Rach. <laughs> being funny um so what i so what i observed last night was that her skull actually looked more like my hand it was flat instead of concave and then this morning it started puffing up just a little bit but it was not concave and that was something that dr glass had told us uh, leaving after her surgery was something to look out for uh, after the shunt was placed to make sure that enough fluid was being drained um, there's always adjustments that might need to be made with the amount of fluid that they drain and um, you know, to check if there's any blockages and that sort of thing. So, um, <clears throat> so it's just a really, um, it's an easy way to tell if the shunt is draining enough or if there's something wrong. So, um, so I called her doctors this morning. Um, they weren't overly concerned. It wasn't an emergency to rush her up there or anything. So. We scheduled her for this afternoon and brought her up there. Um, when uh, when I had her, there's a video that I posted um, of her playing in my arms. That's actually while we were in Dr. Glass's room waiting for him to come in. That was her playing in my arms. So she was um, she was having a good time actually with my strings and. Dr. Glass came in and he was really excited to see her. He's been eager to see her after surgery. Um, so the first thing he wanted to do was to see her, you know, walk. Um, you know, he hasn't seen if she was unsteady or had any balance issues or head tilt or anything. So he said, you know, can you, can you put her down and let's see and um, so I had her in the blanket and I put her down the blanket and I went like this and she she just took off of course we know this about her and he just was like whoa <laughs> he didn't he didn't expect her to have that much energy <laughs> so um, that was all she got she got one zoom in and then it was like okay let's collect her back up because you know she's not actually allowed to run around so um <laughs> she passed the first test with flying collars right off the bat and um, <laughs> and uh, so then we went up on the exam table he looked her over um, felt where all of the shunt is connected both 
on the top of her head, her little knot in the back of her uh, head, and where it drains into her abdomen. Everything is in place, everything is nice and solid. Um, the incision is healing perfectly. Um, so he was extremely happy with um, how well she's doing. And um, she, <laughs> she waited four days to bolt. Yep, that's what Tate did. She was ready to show off right away. Look what I can do. Look, Doc, look, look what I can do. Um, and I was like, no, really, she's been so good. <laughs> um, so, you know, all in all, it was really good. He did, you know, he was glad that we brought her in because, you know, he had, he had told us to, um, if we had seen, uh, the shape of that soft spot change. So, um, he wants to keep her for the weekend and she'll be under observation. There was a little black and blue spot really really tiny but he noticed it uh where where the little bit of swelling was so it is possible that she bumped her head um i at first i was like how is that even possible she's in this tiny playpen and his response was because cats <laughs> so um you know, we can be super safe with everything and still they can bump their head on something and, you, you know, who knows. Um, so it could, it could be that. Um, or it could be, um, you know, what we had talked about earlier, which is that, um, you know, it's not draining enough fluid and, and that's um, the adjustment that they do externally with the magnets. They just adjust the um, amount of fluid. Um, so there's nothing really, you know, serious. Um, nobody's concerned about her there. They're really excited to have her there for the weekend. Um, they, they, they all seem to really miss her. And, um, I'm sorry that we all have to miss her for the weekend here. Um, but her doctors and the staff there are, were really excited to, have time with her. They haven't been able to see her all week and um, they're really attached to her. So, um, so I think that we should appreciate how much they love her too. And they get a little time with her. Um, even though we have to pay for it. <laughs> um, we don't, we're, it's okay with funds. Um, we raised extra, people had donated. Um, in excess of what we needed for her surgery. So, so the estimate that they gave us for this weekend, we're okay. Um, of course, we appreciate, you know, people donating regularly and that's what helps us uh, not be in a, in a crisis when things like this happen. We have um, funds that are ready that are, that are in the KCAT Playroom bank account. So, so I appreciate that, but um, but we're okay. It's not an emergency for funding right now for this weekend. And um, and that's pretty much it. So I don't know exactly when she will be discharged. We'll, um, like usual, we'll get a morning update phone call. I don't expect a lot from tomorrow morning's phone call. Other than, you know, they'll probably say that she's alert and, you know, eating a ton. You know, they'll probably say all of that. And thanks, Rach. <laughs> thanks, Rach and Fatty. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny, Anne. She can't stand. Well, she didn't like the... Uh, the hat that we put on her, so I don't think she's going to want to wear a helmet. But, um, it's cold outside. I came right in here, so I'm sorry I'm sniffly. Came into, um, from outside cold to inside warm. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Maybe Sunday we'll hear a little bit more. We'll know a little bit more about when she, she'll be home. So, um, <clears throat> 
Uh, I don't know about the freeloaders coming in here. It's possible. Not tonight. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to mess up too much of a room. They also, especially Jelly Roll, the reason I didn't, I closed that. Jelly Roll jumps on, he uses this playpen when it's closed like a trampoline. So he jumps on top and like jumps everywhere and it smushes it. So. That's the other thing. Any other questions before my phone goes kaput? I'm going to save this clip and then um, we'll publish it later if you guys missed anything. gonna clean up while I'm sitting here. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I answered that a little bit earlier on the DVR. All right. I need to go plug my phone in. And thank you all for continuing to support T, even when she decides to go on weekend trips away without us. <laughs> am I okay? I am totally okay. I always miss her when she's gone, but um, I get a little more sleep when she's <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> All right, thanks all. Take care.